Alright, what's going on, Spoopa? Um, first off, I'm going to say, if you can't tell, my political rants have subsided. Um, I tend to get a little heat in the moment with a lot of political debates that go on during the political campaign. And for the most part, my approach is you know, mellowed down to you know, just even flowed. Um, you know, the problem is not the politicians. They're synonymous to the problems. They're a big symptom of the problem. But unfortunately, it's the uncompromising and unwillingness of not everybody, but a majority of those who vote that are unwilling to listen to both sides of the argument and come to their own informed opinion. You know, and when I say both sides of the argument, you know, read, read someone on the left side's blog and read someone on the right side's blog. Which one sounds more in line with the you? Uh, you vote and what you think. And, you know, people don't see it that way. They see it as, you know, if they vote Democrat and then they go into a booth to vote and they see a D, they're probably going to vote for a D. Most Democrats will not vote for an R if their life depended on it, even if 90% of the stuff the Republicans saying, they agree with. And that applies to any political party in any country. And that's unfortunate. Because the consequence of people who vote that are like that affect everybody. At the end of the day, when that person at one takes office, we have to deal with them as our leaders for the next so many years. And people don't realize that. Like in Newton's laws of motion, for every action there's an opposite and equal reaction. If we vote for somebody that is apparently should not be there, there's going to be some type of reaction. An example is I'm not saying it's true, but some would say Obama is not ready to lead the country. And that the economy is in the tank because of Obama. Now granted, yes, if you actually look at it on both sides, the collapse happened under President Bush. And it happened with the deregulation done by the Republicans when they were still in charge. That's both sides of the argument. So if you look at it, that you know, that's just one type of argument that I can bring up. And you know, if you look at it from both sides, that can be said for any political switch. You know, 94, the Republicans promised to get rid of the Department of Education. They do. They expanded it with you know, no child left behind. Uh, that's kind of a complete 180 from what you guys originally said, isn't it? You know, people complain about President Bush and his fuzzy math. Yeah, he has fuzzy math, but he also had one trick, one trick pony tricks done by Clinton to get that, you know, money flowing. And once those tricks ran out, that, that math that was done didn't work anymore. That was the reaction. Hence, the economy went bad. That would be the uh, 99 to 2000 tech bubble pop, or sorry, 2000 and 2001 tech bubble pop. You know, so it's all about perspective. It's all on how you tie stuff together. And people tend to only want to hear one side of the issue. And that's unfortunate because some of us have to live with the fact that people vote that way. You know, and I'll say right now, that because we vote that way, there are, are a good amount, I'm not saying all, 
there are a good amount of politicians that are there that are there for no other reason than for self-serving interests that should not be there and you know maybe it's time that there are some consequences on their end to show that and remind them that the people run the country or any country similar to ours in government form that the people in the country not DC not London not any of these other major cities the overall people run the country and the only way people will know that and how they will do that is if there is some type of of informed, opinionated voting public that's slowly, slowly fading because most are getting to the point where it's, well, my vote doesn't matter, so what's the point? And that's too bad. And as far as my outlook on President Obama and the reasons I didn't vote. I didn't vote for him, not because I said screw it, or were screwed any either way. I said I did not vote for either McCain or Nader or President Obama because they did not hit my core issues that I find that are more important to me. McCain, the only two I agree with them are kind of like far from not, you know, they're important, but they're not like my core important issues that I care about and you know I need a, I need a politician to at least hit one of those and I didn't get that any of those with President Obama Nader seems to change his political theories every time he runs so that's why I didn't vote for the presidency but you know that's a different story altogether so, like I said, people need to remember that this, this country and countries that are similar in government forms to ours are for the people, by the people, and run by the people, by the way we vote.